He is the man handpicked by President Trump to lead the Environmental Protection Agency. We are joined this morning live by EP Administrator Scott Pruitt. Thanks for being here with us. Hey, Steve. How are you? Good to good, see you. Good to see you. Yeah. And in many ways, homecoming, of course. Uh, people at home know you as the former Oklahoma Attorney General around these parts. Uh, so you're back here in town uh, going on a, an action tour, if you will, to several different states about a key issue for the EPA. Tell us what you're doing here in town. Well, right now. a state action tour that we've been on for several weeks and will continue for weeks to come in August. And it is all about the waters of the United States rule, a, a rule that uh, Oklahomans know really well. Uh, because it was a rule adopted by the Obama administration that defined dry creek beds in southwest, uh, southwest Oklahoma as waters of the United States, uh, ephemeral drainage ditches, puddles. I was in Utah last week, Steve, and was standing next to a subdivision, uh, next to an Army Corps of Engineers representative, and he looked at an ephemeral drainage ditch outside the sub uh, subdivision and said, that's a water of the United States. And I said, well, no more, it's going to be. And so we're out really getting feedback from folks across the country, governors, DEQs, stakeholders, farmers, ranchers, those who do oil and gas, those who build subdivisions. Land use decisions are being made presently that are subject to this bad rule by the EPA. We're getting that fixed and making sure we get it right going forward. So people at home are thinking this just sounds like arguing over the definition of a word, you know. Um, makes a big deal. But it, but it makes a difference, you're saying, and I know uh, some of the argument here is whether the water can be navigated or not, as some of the original language. That's exactly right. And the reason it's a big deal is because land use decisions are the province of private property owners, cities and towns and states across the country. And so when you want to build a subdivision, when you want to farm and ranch, when you want to engage in oil and gas, if, you, if you're uncertain about whether the EPA has jurisdiction or not, whether you have to get a permit, it causes paralysis. You don't see investment, you don't see capital deployment to, to really grow the economy. Because if you take those steps, and then you find out two years from now, three years from now, that you should have gotten an EPA permit, what happens? Process you get fined, you know, days, uh, multiple days, thousands and thousands of dollars. So it's an impediment to growth, and it's not about a, a clean environment. It's not about water quality. This is all so about- So there are no concerns here in terms of water safety with these waterways? These are, this is all jurisdictional. This is all determining where federal jurisdiction begins and ends, where state jurisdiction begins and ends, and that cooperation that we know. Right now across the country, states set water quality standards. You know, so, so when you see permitting take years and years and years to build buildings and to farm and ranch, you know, a farmer in Oklahoma, if he's got a, you know, natural springs on his land and he wants to build an impoundment pond to feed his livestock, you ought to be able to do that without having to call Washington, D.C. to get permission to do it. So that's why you're here in town right now talking about this issue. And I know over the next 30 days during public comments, people will be able to weigh in on this as well Absolutely. as you guys try to determine the rule here. I, I want to get to this as well. You're here in the state now. Uh, but your travel recently has come under fire. If we can pull this up, 43 of the 92 days between March through May, uh, a note here from a Reuters article of July 23rd, had you either here in Oklahoma or traveling to and from Oklahoma. And former officials within the EPA were calling this extremely unusual for the head of an agency to spend so much time away from Washington. You know, a couple things. You need to consider the source. Uh, the, the, the source of this uh, so-called news is from people that used to work at the Obama EPA that formed an organization to engage in noise like this. Secondly, they can't count. Uh, because the days that they put in that list are days like Easter, Sunday that I was in Oklahoma. So, and we have work to do in Oklahoma. You know, we were in Guyman yesterday talking about WOTUS. I was at Berg Creek, just in Osage so County. So do you dispute the numbers? Absolutely, and we can get you the information. Okay. Uh, but, but frankly, you know, Berg Creek in Osage County, salinity levels are up, temperature levels were up, fish were dying, landowners there were concerned. Region 6 in Dallas had not responded adequately. I was on the ground with Region 6 earlier this year focusing on an issue is water quality. To think that somehow the EPA administrator shouldn't come to Oklahoma to talk about WOTUS or fix environmental issues, I think is absolutely wrong. Well, sure, but we've, been here, we've been here, on, when we've been here on business, the U.S. government's paid for it. When it's been personal, I've paid for it. Okay, Mr. Pruitt, I want to pull up this uh, quote here from the New York Times article. According to Mr. Pruitt's calendar, he typically spends three to five days in the state, but often lists just one official meeting. Is, is that a judicious use of taxpayer uh, uh, time again, and expense? Again, I, I think I've already responded to that. We'll get to the numbers to you. They can't count. Consider the source. And when we've been here on business, the government's paid for it. When we've been here on personal business, I've paid for it. Okay. It's that simple. Uh, in the same article, it was said that staff are saying they have, they're having trouble scheduling some meetings with you because you're out of the office. There's have been you no heard about problems. that? There's been no issues at all in that regard. No There's issues There's been no all. issues with staff trying to get meetings no, with you? not at all. Okay, so you dispute that as well. I dispute this source making up stories like this one that we're spending time talking about this as opposed to the waters of the United States and what, how important this is okay. to Oklahoma. Well, let's move on to an, yeah. an issue important to Oklahoma is then earthquakes. Yeah. We recently just had a 4.2 July 14th near Stroud. 
Uh, what is the role of the EPA in Oklahoma's earthquake problem? As you know, the Corporation Commission has been very responsive, as I understand it, to the seismicity issues, uh, and, and they've adopted steps to address that. We have issues with respect to water quality, uh, that we have jurisdiction on the Clean Water Act, but, but as far as seismicity, that's something that we don't have direct jurisdiction over. So back in uh, December 16, this was before obviously you were head of the EPA, previous administration, they did write a letter to the Corporation Commission saying more needed to be done when it came to taking action here. And Do you I, still believe more needs to be done? I, you know, I'm not up to speed on where the Corporation Commission is today. I think from that date to, to you know, the spring, I think the Corporation Commission, best I know, has been responsive. Uh, that those events have uh, have uh, have lessened, but look, it's a very important issue. Yeah, I mean, this is a very important issue to Oklahomans. It's something that that we saw a spike of those numbers uh, of seismic events. Uh, there seemed to be some correlation, and they have, I think, addressed that or seeking to address it in a very thoughtful and deliberative way. Okay, so just clear it up for us. Do you believe the EPA has a role here? Not that I'm aware of now, but they could have in the future. I mean, I think the state is responding uh, appropriately. So you think everything is, is being done that should be done when it comes to this? I, ca I can't speak to that. I don't, I don't know what the Corporation Commission is doing today. What I'm saying to you is the state has jurisdiction. The Corporation Commission has responded. If there are continued concerns, they need to address it. As far as the EPA is concerned, if it's brought to our attention, we'll do our job. Okay. Uh, I want to ask you about this, too. We've got a lot of questions about this. Uh, your work with President Trump. Can you tell us about the, the experience with the Paris Climate Accord? When you went to him to meet with him about this issue, was, did he already have his mind made up or was this something that Absolutely. you deliberated I mean, over? The, well, clearly it took weeks to make the decision. Sure. So, so that, that process was a process that was very informative for him. He had many people from the Secretary of State uh, to the Secretary of Interior to, to my office as well. We worked with him to help make this decision. Uh, I think this narrative that's out in the marketplace that somehow there's competitiveness between cabinet members uh, on issues like this simply is just a false narrative. I mean, d presidents make large decisions every single day. It's our job to equip him in making those decisions. And each of us have perspective, information uh, that he, he should consider in making those decisions. Uh, Rex Tillerson's viewpoint of the Paris Accord is different than mine. His is international, mine is domestic. That doesn't mean that we're in competition with one another. That means we're doing our job to help inform the president make a decision. Now, when you met with the president, did, it, did he already have his mind made up and you were informing opinions or did he wait until the very end to make that decision? Was well, indicated, it took weeks for him to make the decision. Sure. Uh, so I think that is uh, te tells you that it was a deliberative process and a thoughtful process. Was there at any point a uh, consideration that he may go the other way in this? I think the internal discussions that we had obviously are important to, to keep confidential because my job is to serve the president in that regard, as is Secretary Tillerson's and others. We did our job to help inform the president's opinion. He made the decision. It was a courageous decision. I mean, when you think about the Paris Accord and what it represented for this country, uh, China, India, and Russia uh, didn't take any steps to address CO2 reductions, and we were front-loading all of our costs. We are at pre-1994 levels today with our CO2 footprint. Uh, we've reduced our CO2 footprint by over 18% from 2000 to 2014. So we are leading the world through action in reduction of GHG and CO2. The concern uh, now is that we were leading the world and now we're stepping away from that leadership role by exiting the Paris Climate Accord. Well, how, how would that be when the actions we've taken, we exited Kyoto in 2001, Steve. Guess what we did from 2000 to 2014? Reduced our CO2, CO2 footprint. Bre President Bush has done that. President Bush did the same thing that President Trump did. He exited an international agreement that put America second. Mm -hmm. The president did the exact right thing. Uh, India, uh, didn't have to take any steps under the agreement until they received two and a half trillion dollars in aid. China didn't have to take any steps until 2030. That doesn't sound like a fair deal. The president exited Paris because it was a bumper sticker. It wasn't about reduction of CO2. It was putting America at an economic disadvantage. It was the very right thing to and do. And then, Mr. Pruitt, you point out, you, you looked at the domestic sphere with this. That was your kind of area of expertise. I want to point out the numbers here from the Washington Post ABC News poll uh, about right after the, the president decided to leave the Paris Climate Accord, in which uh, it was 59 percent who said they believed it was a mistake to pull out, whereas just 28 percent approved of that decision. If Chancellor Merkel in Germany is so concerned about CO2 production, why is she getting rid of all nuclear power? This is power? the American people. No, no, no here's the issue. This. The American people look at the Paris Accord as symbolic of action on CO2. What they're not aware of is what you and I are talking about largely, that we have led through, we're at pre-1994 levels. You know why, Steve? Because of innovation and technology, a conversion to natural gas and the generation of electricity, largely what's happening here in Oklahoma. But also because uh, of changes for things such as mile drilling. per gallon changes. I mean, the CAFE standards have made an impact, but we've led the world in those areas. I mean, wh why would America go to Paris and be apologetic 
when we've already led in the reduction of GHG through action, not words. The past administration, honestly, was about bumper stickers and words and not about leadership and action. We have done, we have nothing to be apologetic about with respect to our CO2 reduction. And if you go back, there's such short memory on this, go back and read the accounts of the environmental left when the Paris Accord was passed, they were very critical of the Paris Accord. You know why? Because China and India weren't held responsible for CO2 reductions, that's why. Okay, and I gotta ask you about this real quick. Uh, internally, obviously, you're an Oklahoma guy, uh, and we're Oklahoma News Station. 2018, is your name gonna be on the list of candidates running for governor? It's, it, it's amazing to me that those questions come up because you go through a grueling confirmation process, lead on these issues as we are yeah. internationally, and I come back to Oklahoma and talk about WOTUS in fixing some of these problems, and these questions come up. I well, mean, I'm yeah, serving- Sure, we're I'm reading serving, it as places I'm, such as the Washington Post and the New York Times as well. Yeah, and again, don't believe everything you read, particularly today. Okay, so is that a yes or a no? I'm doing the job that the president's called me to do. I'll be there as long as the Lord leads me to be there and the president wants me to be there. That's how long I'll be there. All right, so yeah. we will find out, I guess, the yeah. answer to that one. Mr. Yeah. Pruitt, yeah. thanks yeah. so much for joining us this Thank morning. You. Thank Appreciate you. it, we'll be right back after this.